hi there welcome back to our new course in which we are going to build this complete responsive chat application i know a lot of you are waiting for a chat application so now i am going to release this application and as you can see we are going to do lots of things inside this application and it will be completely working so let's now take a look at this application so first of all i am going to log out of this user which is already created okay then we'll create a new user so let's go to the sign up option then we'll just enter the name okay so here let's say the name is mike warner okay then you just need to enter a valid email so let's try entering a faulty email here i'm just going to write mike.com okay then in place of password i'll just write whatever i want okay then if i click on create account then you can see it's saying that please include at the rate that means it has validation in place so let's write mike at the rate gmail.com okay then here in place of this password let's see what we get if i click on create account then it's saying that user validation is failing password should be of minimum length 8 so that means we also have validation on front end as well as back end so i'm going to make it 8 characters password then if i click on create account then you can see our account is created and now after i have logged in you can see uh, we have our profile over here which is visible right now and also we have this profile section over here so just now we saw how we can sign up to this application we are going to use jwt in order to make our authentication work so now let's look at all of the users that are already online right now you can see a list of them over here and if i just click on any of the users then you will be able to see the chat window now here what i'm going to do let's also test the login functionality so here i already have one of the user which is our test user and this is another user so i'm just going to log out and here let's just log in again so you see these are the credentials they are already filled in let's say if i just uh, misspell something over here then let's see what happens if i click on sign in then you can see we got the appropriate error message which says incorrect email or password so that means all of the validation are working right okay now we just need to click on the sign in button and it will show you logged in successfully now you can just click on these uh, different users and see their chat history right now what we what i'm interested in let's check out this profile section first of all so as you can see over here we can modify our first name last name but this email field is read only i am not able to click on it and edit it but we can edit our bio and apart from that we can also change our profile picture and for uploading these profile pictures we are going to use uh, amazon s3 okay so here i'm just going to pick any image let's say this one okay and here i'm just going to submit it and you can see my profile image is updated both here as well as inside this card and if i just go to the other users okay then you can see my profile picture is also updated over here in real time so that means our socket connection is working correctly and let's now focus on this chat okay so here i have this test user okay and i am currently chatting with shreyan shah and as you can see this is my profile so i'm going to open up this same chat window okay for the test user let's write a message i'm going to say hi okay simple message and here you can see this message is sent and we are also able to see the timestamp which is 4 45 pm similarly we got the same message over here okay but on the other side which indicates whether it's incoming or outgoing so here you see the name okay and uh, shreyan sah has sent this message at 4 45 pm similarly we can respond to this message from over here so here i'm just going to write hello and you can see that message is appearing over here in real time so we are going to build this functionality inside this course and that's not all we have also implemented this uh, emoji feature over here so you can also send emojis okay whatever you like so if i just press enter okay then you see that message is now sent so this is our functionality of sending simple text messages as well as emojis now as it's already visible you can see we can switch our application between light and dark mode and inside this chat window we have our we have a background just like whatsapp okay so this is one of the features of our application and apart from this our application is quite responsive so if you just resize the screen you can see it is going to adapt nicely okay so this is also going to work on any size of device whether it's mobile tablet desktop laptop 
it's going to work on all of them now this is the introduction of our application let's now talk about the tech stack of this application so as you can see on my screen we have uh, three parts inside this application this first one is front end okay and front end uh, in front end we are going to make use of react js along with tailwind css and redux for backend we are going to use node.js express.js mongodb and there should be a fourth one which is socket.io which is very important actually because we are going to make use of socket.io to form real time connection and exchange messages with the other users and for our cloud needs we are going to make use of amazon s3 to store our images okay and for the deployment purpose we are going to make use of aws ec2 so by the end of this course you are going to build this complete application which has all these features and you are also going to deploy it on web server so that you can share it with your friends and family and also put it in your portfolio so that's it for this one okay now we have discussed the introduction of this video about the tech stack now it's time for the code base if you want to get the code base of this application then you can find the link in the description box you can download it from there okay complete uh, complete code base is given over there and we are going to start this course from scratch so there is no need for any starter file or anything like that we are going to write every line of code by ourselves inside this video and let's now talk about the backend and frontend setup so what i'm going to do let's open up the desktop here i'm inside my desktop as you can see i'm going to create another folder and i'm going to call it new project you can call it whatever you want okay then inside this i'm going to create another folder that will be called server let's call it backend actually okay now i'm just going to open this backend inside my vs code editor since i am working on a mac right now so i can just drag and drop it in, in vs code like this and it will open up but you can also open it uh, using terminal okay or that option uh, you can right click on it and click on open with vs code so the point is you should open it inside your vs code like i have opened mine over here so this is our backend folder now the first thing that we need to do inside backend is to initialize npm for that i'm going to open up this terminal window okay now let's actually collapse this debug console because we don't need that right now and the first thing that we should do over here is i'm going to write sudo npm in it okay and i'm using this sudo because i'm working on a mac and i have to provide it administrator permission because of configuration of my computer okay but if you are working on a linux then also you can use sudo but in windows you have to uh, remove this sudo you have to just write npm in it okay so whenever i'm writing sudo do not write it if you are working on a windows machine just leave it and write rest of the command now we are just going to press enter and then we'll be asked some questions then we'll have to basically write answer for each one of them and keep pressing enter so let's see how this npm init process is going to go so here you see it's asking the package name and it's suggesting us to keep the package name as backend okay which is also the repo name so i'm just going to press enter because i i like this default name similarly for version we have version 100 i'm going to keep it same i'm not going to add any description to it but you can add any description like uh, whatever you want then it's asking about entry point here we have to modify it i'm going to write over here server.js then press enter test command i'm going to leave it as empty git repository will initialize git later on after that i'm not going to add any keywords license i'll keep it to isc okay then you just need to press yes if you are satisfied with this configuration for your npm init then press enter now you see this package.json file is up, uh, appeared just now over here and inside this file you can see all of the information that we just shared with it inside the terminal like the name version description and all these things so what is going to happen we are going to create another file over here which will be called as server.js okay this is the file which is the entry point so what i'm going to do here you see this main is server.js inside this scripts i'm going to add another script for running this server and that will be called as a start so let's write over here nodemon server.js this is a command that we'll be using to run our application okay and here you can see uh, i'm getting this insufficient permissions so now we have created these two files and i have also saved my package.json file because i changed the permission to administrator just now and what i'm going to do next let's create another file which will be called as app.js 
inside this file we'll be creating our express application okay and to keep our configuration variables what we are going to do i'm going to create another file called config.env this file is going to contain our environment variables when while we are developing this application okay and after that when we'll deploy it to aws we'll simply put all of the environment variables right inside our ec2 instance then after this the first thing that i'm going to do over here uh, in terms of folder is to create our models by models i mean how we are going to basically store data inside our database so we have to define a blueprint for that which is also called a schema and to house all those schemas we are going to create this folder called models similarly after this what i'm going to do i'm going to create another folder called routes this routes will be actually the path that you can basically call or you can say the routes okay as the name suggests it's going to uh, redirect your request to a particular controller by controller i mean this particular folder which is going to contain the logic for various functions that our server is able to do like uh, uh, login to the client side signing up okay sending messages getting the users online offline status all those kind of things are uh, they the logic for that will be written inside these controllers and we'll also have something called middleware now what happens when we are basically processing a request which is coming from the client side we'll have to process it in multiple steps okay so those multiple steps are called middlewares okay once the process finishes then it is passed to the next middleware and so on till the whole process is completed so to house all those middlewares we are going to create this folder and inside this we'll have all of those functions there will be another folder called utils this is going to contain the utility functions okay like a function for enabling us to catch the error in a synchronous function okay all those things will be contained inside this utilities folder then after this uh, we'll also have another file for socket.io initialization and that will be our socket server okay so here i'll just create socket server.js and after this file we are also going to contain another folder inside this repository and that will be called socket handlers because to execute some logic when we receive some event okay we'll have uh, this folder inside which we'll uh, have our logic for basically do something whenever we receive some kind of event from the client side so this is the files and folder structure that we are going to have for our backend okay and apart from this we are also going to include packages okay and since i don't want to basically install each package one by one as we are building the application so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this dependencies okay from the already written code base and i have it with me now what i'm going to do after this license i'm just going to uh, add this comma and paste dependencies like this and from this list of dependencies we are going to actually remove this send grid email okay and we are also not going to use this html to text so all of the other packages will be needed inside this application so i'm what i'm going to do right now let's save this package.json file what uh, you can just uh, pause this screen at the moment okay and install each one of these packages like i will show you you just need to write uh, ignore this sudo if you are working on windows then write npm i then the name of package like bcrypt.js okay bcrypt.js then write body parser okay and so on all of the names will be written in sequence after spaces then you just need to hit enter and all of these packages will be installed but what i'm going to do since i already have it inside my package.json so i'll run this command npm i okay and i'll just enter my password and this is going to install all of these dependencies inside our project so you'll see we'll have our node modules folder over here once these dependencies are installed and while that is uh, happening in the background so now as you can see we have installed all of the dependencies and we have this node modules folder which contains all of the dependencies that we are going to use inside this application then the next step is to basically add some eslint configuration add git ignore file and also add our prettier rc file so here i have just copied it let me just paste it and then i'll explain it to you one by one so inside this eslint.json file as you can see we just have some uh, configuration okay some rules defined over here so what you can do you can just again pause at this moment and write it from this screen okay and 
for this get ignore file you can find it anywhere on the internet just search for it okay or you can also create a repo on github or git or bitbucket and you will get it by default okay so what we have inside this get ignore file is just uh, some files and folders that should be ignored when we are pushing it to our github account and after that we have a simple file called prettier rc and inside this file we have just one configuration which says single code true that means when we are formatting our file okay when after we will write some code and i'll click on this format document then it should always convert all the double quotes to single code for me okay so this is the only configuration that we are going to need inside this application we have already set it up our repository for the backend and we have also installed all of the packages required at this moment now in the next part we are going to start writing our server and application logic so that's it for this video i'll see you in the next one